This video emphasizes the geometry of excitation and how spin echo works. But let's first get oriented. There is a sequence pulse diagram for a fast spin echo sequence along the bottom of the animation. In the top right is our model scanner, which shows the activity of the coils. Again, note that the sequence pulse diagram and the coils in the scanner are color coded. For now, focus on the yellow, blue, and purple curves. The yellow curve shows when the excitation pulse is transmitted. The angle of the excitation is shown next to the pulse in degrees. The blue curve shows the slice select gradient. Note that the excitation pulse and the slice select gradient always go together. The purple curve shows the signal generated by the patient. This is measured by the receive coils. Now that we're oriented, let's discuss the spin animations in the top left and top middle. These animations show the protons as they are excited and processing. The difference between the two is that the top left animation is in the rotating frame of reference, while the top middle animation is in the laboratory frame of reference. They're showing the same process, but in the rotating frame of reference, we rotate around the z-axis at the lower more frequency. Each frame of reference has its uses, but after this video, we'll stick with the rotating frame of reference. The dark yellow arrow pointing straight up along the positive z-axis reminds us that the primary magnet is always on, making a very strong magnetic field in this direction. When the excitation is transmitted, a second yellow arrow that stays in the xy plane is seen. This is the xy plane magnetic field imposed by the transmit coils. Look at the laboratory frame of reference and notice that it isn't a static field. Instead, it rotates with the processing protons at the Larmor frequency. This is critical to the excitation process. Looking at the rotating frame of reference helps us understand why. The magnetic field causes the dipoles to move according to the right hand rule. In other words, they simply rotate around the axis of the imposed magnetic field when it's on. We control how far they rotate by varying the time and strength of the excitation pulse. This is how we accomplish 90 degree and 180 degree rotations with a fast spin echo sequence. T2 star relaxation is also represented in the spin animations. Some of the protons process faster, and these are green. Others process slower, and these are red. As time goes on after the 90 degree excitation pulse, the first pulse in the diagram, T2 star relaxation spreads the dipoles apart and weakens the measurable signal. A 180 degree excitation delivered later, however, reverses the T2 star relaxation. The reason for this is appreciable in the spin animation showing the laboratory frame of reference. After the 180 degree excitation, the green higher frequency dipoles are now behind the red lower frequency dipoles. When they catch up, the signal peaks and we measure it. Notice that how long we wait to deliver the 180 degree pulse defines the echo time. Also take a look at the purple curve and notice that each echo is weaker. This is because not all of the relaxation is reversible. This is the difference between T2 star and T2.